The first kidney transplant was performed from a living donor in December 1954 by Dr. Joseph Murray in Boston. As of March 16, 2010, approximately 83,950 Americans are on the waiting list for a kidney transplant. Our first reaction was to address the shortage of kidneys available. However, taking a step back, our analysis demonstrated the growing concern of health and management of resources post-transplant. About 2% of patients will die and 4% will lose their transplant over time. Acute rejection could develop over a period of days, which could lead to a rise in the blood creatinine. The patient could be subjected to go through dialysis again. Chronic rejection could develop over a period of months or years, while other complications are urinary infection, cytomegalovirus, diabetes, infection, and circulation problems, and the chances of a successful pregnancy decreases to 75% from 97% related to creatinine level greater than 120 minimums per liter. After undergoing kidney transplantation, all patients are placed on immunosuppressant drugs for life. These drugs are very costly, and to date, Medicare will only cover for them for 36 months. These drugs, such as cyclosporin, tacrolimus, spirulimus, and prednisolone, are given to suppress the immune system to inhibit rejection of the transplanted kidney. Some of the adverse effects associated with these medications include diabetes, high cholesterol, bone weakening, gum hypertrophy, and nephrotoxicity. Between 2% and 5% of kidney transplant patients will develop a lymphoma as an adverse side effect. So, let us consider a case study of John, a 60-year-old who was delighted to be a kidney recipient but three months post-surgery, he developed lymphoma related to his immunosuppressant drugs. His dilemma now is if he would be losing the kidney through rejection and returning to dialysis, knowing that it is unlikely to get another kidney or dying of lymphoma. Initially, John was delighted about the kidney transplant as a final solution to his diagnosis. But post-surgery, his health has deteriorated as a result of the transplant. According to a longitudinal study done in 2007, led by Dylan Smith at the University of Michigan, which followed 460 patients pre- and post-transplant, approximately 42% of these post-transplant patients overestimated improvement in their quality of life. As a result of complications, overnight hospital stays increased by 9%. From these studies, we realize that too often, the quality of life is overlooked by the various interest groups such as pharmaceutical companies and hospital administration. But as nurses, it's our obligation to advocate and provide awareness about the reality of life post-transplant. Who is really benefiting? Was there any improvement in the quality of life for these patients after the kidney transplant?